When we think of wine, our minds often wander to the rolling hills of Tuscany, the lush landscapes of Bordeaux, or the sunny valleys of Napa. However, the world of wine is vast and diverse, with countless wine regions producing exceptional bottles that rarely make it into the limelight. In this video, we'll take you on a journey to explore the top 10 most underrated wine regions in the world and uncover the underappreciated and often overlooked wines that are made from them. Welcome to Wine Basics by Phil of Pinot, where we create wine education videos for beginners and wine lover. Our journey begins in Valle de Guadalupe, Mexico's largest wine producing region. Did you know that Mexico was the first place that wine was made in North America? Vines were brought to Mexico with the arrival of the conquistador and traditional winemaking began around 1523 by the monks in the various missions that needed ceremonial wine to carry out their religious service. The Valle is the most important wine producing region in Mexico, where around 85 to 90% of all Mexican wine is produced. Most of the vineyards are planted at an elevation of 1,000 to 1,250 feet. The winds that blow from the Pacific Ocean on the west and the Gulf of California to the east create a Mediterranean climate. Grenache and Syrah are well suited to the hot temperature, along with other popular varietals Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Tempranillo, Nebbiolo, Sangiovese, Chardonnay, and Sauvignon Blanc. The area is a melting pot of different wine styles and blend, with a winemaking community of individuals bursting with innovative ideas. Recently, the implementation implementation of sustainable farming and the installation of underground irrigation systems to water the vineyards has helped increase and improve production. Some wineries to try are Lechuza, Corona del Valle, and Solar Fortune. Next up on our underrated wine region list is the amazingly beautiful Okanagan Valley, Canada in British Columbia, which is more often associated with mountains, forests, and beautiful lakes. The wine industry has taken off in Okanagan, which stretches for 155 miles. In 1984, there were only 13 wineries, but today that number has exploded to 180. The mountain range that surrounds the Okanagan Valley has peaks that are 8,000 feet or more more, which protects the valley from the typical wet weather, resulting in only light spattering of showers during the growing season. Located between the 49th and 50th parallel, the Okanagan Valley wine region is the same latitude as Champagne, France, as well as the Rheingau in Germany. Rainfall on average is between 10 to 16 inches per year, which is a desert continental climate moderated by the four lakes that are interconnected in the region. The summers are hot with long days of sunshine with average temperatures of 85 degrees Fahrenheit but can reach the 100. Cool summer nights help create fresh and bright wine, a signature of Okanagan wine. Many different microclimates result in German style Riesling, red blends that mimic Bordeaux, fresh Pinot Noir, and a variety of sparkling wines, white wine, and of course world famous ice wine. Popular varietals include Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, Chardonnay, and Riesling. Next on our list, we move on to Sicily, which many might associate first with the film The Godfather. Sicily is an underrated wine region that has produced top-notch wines for thousands of years. Its Mediterranean climate makes it ideal for growing grapes. Mount Etna, a still very active volcano, has a big influence on the terroir and soil in the surrounding vineyards that are rich in volcanic nutrient. Nero da Avola is the primary red Sicilian grape variety, along with indigenous varietals such as Norella Mascalese, Frappato, and Norello Cappuccio. International varietals such as Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Syrah are also very popular in Sicily. White wine is commonly made from indigenous varietals such as Caricante, Catarato, Carillo and Solia, Grecanico, Bianca, Malvasia, Zabibo, and Moscato. Sicilian wines are known for their fresh, fruity, and elegant characteristics. We encourage you to try an Etna Rosso or an Etna Bianco today. Next on our top 10 underrated wine region is Nausa, Greece. In the 19th century, its wines were very popular among European consumers as the Greeks avoided paying high taxes to the Ottoman Empire by exporting their wines across Europe. In the 1960s, many of the vineyards that had been destroyed by phylloxera were replanted and thus began the introduction of modern winemaking techniques 
techniques, sparking the catalyst that brought quality wine production back to the region. The region is 70 miles west of Thessaloniki in northern Greece and has some of the most important appellations in Greece. Mount Vermeo protects the vineyards from the cold winds that blow in from the Balkan Peninsula, but also brings cool damp winds from the Aegean coast, making the Mediterranean climate remarkably cool. 740 acres of the native red wine grape Zeno Mavro are planted over nine different villages. Up next on our list is the Colchagua Valley in Chile, situated between the Andes and the coastal mountain range. Colchagua Valley produces some of the finest red wines in Chile, but still flies under the radar in the world wine scene. The steep slopes of the valley are terraced for grape cultivation on well-drained soils that are primarily composed of granite and are bordered to the north by the Tenguiririca River. The sea winds cool the vineyards on hot days and the mild Mediterranean climate creates a perfect balance of ripeness and acidity. Cabernet Sauvignon makes up around 40% of grape production, followed by Carmenere, Syrah, Merlot, Malbec, Petit Verdot, Cabernet Franc, and Pinot Noir. Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc are the leading white varietal. Some popular producers include Casa La Postol, who make the 100-point scoring Clo Apalta, and Vigna Montes, who make the top Carmenere-based wine called Purple Angel. Next on our most underrated wine region list, Central Otago, New Zealand, the southernmost wine region. The first vines were planted around 1864, but the winemaking in the region only took off in the mid 1990s. The extreme climate make it essential to carefully choose where to plant vineyards in the six unique subregions of Gibston, Bannockburn, the Cromwell Basin, Bendigo, Wanaka, and Alexandra, where the temperatures range from cool to extremely hot. Central Otago is one of the best places to grow the erratic Pinot Noir varietal. In fact, some of the best Pinot Noir in the world outside of Burgundy come from Central Otago. Chardonnay, Riesling, Pinot Gris, Gewürztraminer, and Sauvignon Blanc all grow well here. Wineries to try in this region include Mount Difficulty, Roaring Meg, and Peregrine Wine. Next, we'll travel back to Europe to the beautiful and underrated wine region of Vaux, Switzerland, a UNESCO World Heritage Site 2007. The vineyards grow on steep slopes overlooking Lake Geneva. Most of the 200 wineries here are small, family-run businesses, some dating back to the 1300. If you've never had wine from Vaux, it is probably because 95% of the wines that are made in this region are consumed there. There are about 2,000 acres of vineyards growing on alpine slopes that were once a glacier that collapsed 15,000 years ago, leaving a unique terroir of clay and limestone. The sun reflects off the lake onto terraced vineyards where the Chasselet grape creates the major white wine of the region. Pinot Noir and Gamay produce red wines while Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, and Sauvignon Blanc are made into white wines. Next on our underrated wine region list is Cartley, Georgia. Georgia is the first place in Europe that modernized winemaking. Wine has been made there for more than 8,000 years. Archaeological evidence shows that Georgians produced wine as early as 6,000 BC. Wine was made by farmers and produced in bulk quantities that were then stored in pits. Over the next 2,000 years, the pits were replaced by clay and fora vessels called quevri that were buried underneath the soil and filled with crushed grapes and juice to ferment over the winter. In the springtime, the pits would be uncovered and the remains of the fermented grapes would be removed. In 2017, 8,000 year old clay container was found and has been documented as being the oldest winemaking relic that exists. On top of native red and white variety, the Georgians are renowned for their sparkling wines that are made from the Saparavi grape varietal. The moderately subtropical humid climate that is influenced by the region's proximity to the Black Sea creates a very long growing season that is ideal for growing exceptional grapes. And last but not least on our top 10 most underrated wine regions are the vineyards of Bekaa Valley, Lebanon. The Lebanese have been making wine since 7000 BC. The Phoenicians exported wines to Mediterranean civilizations such as Egypt. The modern winemaking era started with the arrival of the French Jesuits in 1857 who planted the Sanso varietal to make ceremonial wine. In 1991, 
there were only four wineries in the valley. This number has grown to 30 wineries in the Bacal Valley, which accounts for 90% of the country's production. The vineyards are on a large plateau that is almost 3,300 feet above sea level in soils that are mostly composed of limestone and clay. The mountainous geography protects the vines from the desert-like conditions to the east, as well as the strong maritime rains that come in from the west. The majority of the varieties include Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Carignan, Sanso, and Grenache, which stylistically draw comparisons to the Bordeaux-style reds. Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Viognier, and the indigenous varietals of Merois and Obade create outstanding white wine. All right, I know we said that Lebanon was our last spot on this list, but I have to include one more region that is underappreciated, and that is Uruguay. Uruguay's wine industry is a hidden gem in the world of viticulture, particularly noted for its exceptional Tanat wine. Tanat is a red wine grape that originated from the Mataran region of southwest France, but it has found a new meaning meaning in promising home in Uruguay, where it has become the national grape. Uruguay is located in the southern part of South America, nestled between Argentina and Brazil, with a coastline along the Atlantic Ocean. This geographical setting provides a temperate climate with a consistent rainfall and breezes from the Atlantic, creating ideal conditions for viticulture. The moderate climate helps in producing wines with a balance of ripeness and acidity, which is beneficial for Tanat, a grape known for its robust tannins and deep color. In recent years, Uruguay's wine industry has gained international recognition, attracting wine enthusiasts and tourists looking to explore its vineyards and wineries. The country's wine routes offer visitors a chance to experience the scenic beauty of Uruguay's countryside while tasting a variety of wine. And these are our 10 most underrated wine regions in the world. Comment below your favorite underrated wine region that we may have missed.